Now we're going to move into the third and final phase of our power workout. We're going to go into more specific chest, back, uh, shoulder, bicep, tricep work as opposed to the full body. Although we're still going to be using engaging the core and engaging uh, the full body in a lot of the movements. Just a little bit more specialized in these areas. So let's get started. In the second portion, we're going to go and concentrate on the back. First, we're going to do an alternating arm pull down with torso rotation. And then we're going to go into a staggered stance, one arm dumbbell row, with your hands supported on the bench. Get yourself some position. You want to lean back, stack off the weight, weight off the back, and you're going to pull with the scapula. Bring the scapula towards the spine before you pull with the arm. So it's shifting back and down, pull, and then rotate the torso. Better come back up, do the same thing on the other side, pull down, and rotate as you get down to the bottom of the move. Here we go. Pull down and rotate. We're going to do 50 repetitions to each side. Make sure you keep your chest up. Next off. From there, we'll go on to the staggered stance dumbbell row. You're going to have your hand supported on the bench. Whatever hand is supported, that's the foot that's going to come forward. What you're doing is you're bringing the dumbbell from that toe. As you pull the scapula again, sliding it on the rib cage toward the spine and rotating the torso. I want you to look down the line of the side that you're Doing the row. We do 15 reps to the side. You really stretch across. Let the scap come down, slide it on the uh, rib cage, and pull and come back. And then we'll switch sides. The first segment is going to be with the pulse push ups. From pulse push ups, we're going to go into our functional lateral raise. Our functional lateral raise, we're going to go back and down into a tricep push up. When I need a pulse push up, I like using handles. You don't have to have them, but I like to use them because it takes the stress off the wrist. I have a little bit further out in the shoulder width. You can turn the handles whatever way feels comfortable for your shoulder, shoulder work confidence. I like a little bit of an angle. Keep yourself out, feet about shoulder width. Engage the core, really lock the hips, the core together, have your neck nice and loose in a neutral spine angle. And what we're going to come down to is just below 90 and then back up to 90. So it's a little pulse. Now, if this is too much for you, go ahead and start with your knees down and go into that pulse push up until you get to the point where your strength allows you to lock that core. Even in the down position, lock the core and go through that pulse position. So it's down just a little bit past 90 degrees. That's your pulse push up. From here, we're going to go into the functional lateral raise. Shoulder width stance, I want you to go into your rotation. And what we're actually doing here is allowing the chest muscles to help the deceleration of the weight as we come through. Now, it doesn't have to be that heavy a weight. Right now, I'm using five pounds. The main thing is that you get yourself around. Think of your belly button as a flashlight. Wherever your hips go, you want that flashlight to shine. I have to uh, credit my mentor, Chuck Wolf, with that one. So, as you come through, you're going to bring the, the trailing dumbbell tapping the chest. The lead is going to have your arm about 90 degrees and then about here. So you're turning and rotating. Do about 15 of those to each side. Then we get down into the push up position again. This time we're going to move it in. The handlebars are, push-up bars are parallel to the body. Elbows can tight to the body, feet 
go a little closer together now. And now we're going to go from 90 and above, focusing on the triceps. Again, make sure that neck is nice and soft, and then you lock in the core. Again, you can go down to your knees. This is a little bit too much, but make sure you keep that core locked, the neck soft, and then tall. There you have it. Pulse push up to your functional lateral raise, to your tricep pulse. All right, after we've done the pulse push ups, functional lateral raise, the tricep push ups, and then we go through the alternating arm uh, pull downs with torso rotation and staggered stance row, we're going to go back and repeat that process, up the weight a little bit, bring the repetition count down uh, a slight bit on the uh, pull downs and on the staggered stance rows. The pulse push ups, of course, you're trying to go to failure, absolute failure. Make sure that your core stays strong. When you start to feel that core go, you're done. Or if you start to feel any kind of sagging through the shoulders or your neck starts to come out of alignment, you're done. All right? So we go through those, each of those, twice, and now we'll move on to the next segment. This movement is going to be the kettlebell press and walk. With this, you can grab your kettlebell, bring it up to the rack position. We're going to step forward five steps. steps. Now you want to think about, when you're going forward, it's going to be heel toe. Think about keeping your feet in a straight line, and when you're going backwards, same thing, in reverse, toe to heel. You're going to do that. I go five steps forward, five steps back. Now, switch to hands, and what we're going to do is go into a press. Now, as you notice, when I'm having the kettlebell upside down, you might not be able to do this at the very beginning. You start with a small one, work your way up. Uh, what this does is creates grip strength, okay? It really helps with uh, increasing grip strength in the golfer. So you, even though you're gripping the club lightly, you want to have good control. Uh, the more strength you have, the less you really have to use. So now we're going to press up. You want to try and keep the shoulders square as you can. Walk yourself forward. enjoyed the three programs that we put together for you to, that encompasses the power workout that we do on tour. Next week, we'll be bringing you the first installment of the strength and endurance phase. So, give me some feedback on what you've just gone through and how you have been able to incorporate this workout into your routine, into your life, into your training system, and then stay tuned for the next segment of that strength and endurance program. Thanks for your uh, tuning in, and I'll talk to you soon.